Valentine's Day is right around the corner and I am a firm believer that you cannot love anyone else before you love yourself. Love and truly understand who you are as a person and at a soul level too. I have three pillars that I abide when it comes to forming a sustainable self-care routine or mindset. Number one would be no judgment. You are responsible to create a safe space for yourself, a space where there's no judgment at all on what you think, how you react. As long as you're not hurting anyone else and yourself, you deserve a safe space and you are responsible of that safe space. Honesty and radical transparency with yourself. You wouldn't know what's actually bothering you if you don't allow yourself to unravel it. Like I said before, you are responsible for creating a safe space for yourself and having accountability is you being responsible on your self growth and development. Right now is the perfect time for you to start your self care journey and you don't necessarily need a fancy bath tops, bath tops, bath tubs with bubble, those bombs, bath bombs or tarot decks unless you want to. All you need most of the time is a book and a pen. You've guessed it, I'm recommending journaling and reflecting. I know journaling seems like a trendy thing nowadays, but it actually works. And it's also flexible to you personally because you make the rules. You can start journaling at any time of the day that is suited for you. For me, I journal religiously in the morning. The moment I wake up, I say, good morning angels and universe because I'm weird like that. And then I grab my notebook and I write everything down. I usually start with what I'm grateful for and sometimes I move on with my dreams or just my random thought to get my juices flowing. I know sometimes that it can be really confusing and daunting and you're not really sure where to start. So I highly encourage you to get journal prompts and where you can get it, you can use Pinterest or even on Instagram, you can find creators putting out their journal prompts and find the ones that resonate with you. Some of them actually have a really good question and the fact that you're resonating to a certain question, I feel like it's a sign that your soul wants you to answer or address that specific topic in your life at the time. Journaling will not work if you don't implement the pillars that I set for you. So like I said, build a no judgment zone when you are journaling. Even if something is so minute and if you think it's petty, just write it down and be honest with yourself. Why are you actually bothered by that thing that your roommate did to you or what your partner said? Trust me, the things that I've complained about in my journal has been super petty and almost childish sometimes. When I reread them, I do laugh. I do take the time to reflect and give myself the space to unravel why I feel a certain way, why I react a certain way. And from then on, I evaluate and I figure out what I need to work on. So think about it this way. You can only grow if you know which part of yourself to nurture. And you taking action to nurture that part of you is accountability. When I was 10, I used to have a hit list. Trust me when I say, forgiving was not my cup of tea. And please keep in mind, when you forgive someone, it doesn't mean you give them the green light to do it again, or you accept that kind of behavior or whatsoever. No, it's just you accepting, releasing that anger. You've learned the lesson that you need to learn and move forward. And yes, it is easier said than done. And please trust me when I say when you forgive, it is good for the soul and it gives you more space for welcoming new creativity, new relationships, and new abundance in your life. Just please trust me. It. I'm not gonna tell you to text, call, or Facebook message anyone to say sorry. We're not doing that. What we're doing is kind of building a hit list, but it's for forgiveness. So here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna grab our journal and a good pen, and we're gonna list down the name, if you remember their name, and what did they do to make you upset? And this can even apply to yourself. What did you do to make you upset? What did you do to make you not trust yourself anymore? Um, what did you do that you take 
something for granted and don't think about it anything that pops in your head the first thing just write it down and that's what i did with my last list i had 25 and one of it was and let me expose myself one of the things that i was upset um it was a time where my parents didn't give me a furby yes apparently nisa was very still upset about that and of course some other petty things that my friends my partner even one of my professors did or said that in hindsight, it wasn't a big deal. Some of it was pretty problematic, but acknowledge all of them. Just write everything down. Once you've written everything down, take the time to reread them again and reflect on it as well. Some of it was really funny. Some of it, you definitely have a deeper meaning why you felt that way at that time. And some of it was traumatizing. And everything is valid. Once you have that done, you can either rip the page, shred it, burn it, throw it away, or even keep it in your journal, but make a conscious decision to release and forgive. Remember, forgiving is not you saying it's okay they did it to you. Unfollow, unsubscribe, unfriend that content creator, that individual that has been irritated, triggering, or even make you jealous. It's not petty. I know some people might think like, oh, I'm following that person from school was very petty. No, it's not. If it's affecting your mental health, if it's not bringing you joy or inspiring you in any way, unfollow them. And if they're bothering you, maybe block them. This is good for your mental health as well. And this is self-care and it's sustainable too. Once you're done with your unfollowing heist, rebuild and surround yourself around people and content that inspires you and that nourish your soul truly. Another way to supplement your forgiving, releasing journey is meditation or maybe prayer if that works for you and even dancing. Just letting it go. What I like to do personally, I like to do the Ho'oponopono meditation. Um, I think I butchered that, but it is a sacred meditation from Hawaiian, like ind indigenous Hawaiian. And I will leave a link down below for that meditation that I like. And let me tell you, it's definitely an emotional roller coaster because sometimes you kind of have to relive the trauma or that hurt, but instead of in the shoes of a victim, you are in the shoes of a survivor. We all heard about this, but it works. And, uh, and yes, I'm gonna assume that you have or in the process of setting boundaries for your friends, family, and your loved ones. Now, I want you to set a boundary with yourself. And this can be anything to your consumption of alcohol or certain food. This can apply to your consumption of news. Some people get triggered by the news because it does tend to be a bit stressful here and there. So setting that boundary on what you can do, when you can do, how long you can do. Think of it this way. Sometimes in order for you to practice self-care and protect your energy, you have to treat yourself like a child and you are the mother. Know when to be kind, know when to be patient, and know when to be strict and enforce some discipline. Get to know yourself as well as you know your best friend and care for yourself as you care for your loved ones. I know these pillars and these tips is gonna work for you because it has definitely worked for me. I am still in that healing journey. We're all in a journey. And I want you to be as happy and in flow as much as you can. I'm still in my healing journey and I'm supporting you and sending you healing vibes from here. And I will see you guys next week. Take care guys. Don't forget to be a better human.